Let's look at C. C is very interesting as well. What is C saying? 100 meters of wire is to be used to form a square and a circle. How much of the wire should be used for the square? And how much should be used for the circle to enclose the maximum total area? <laughs> Interesting, right? So we want to come up with a square. The square plus a circle should be able to form they should be able to what? 100 meters. 100 meters. 100 meters of the wire. So, you know that the length of a square, the length of it, we call them the perimeters, right? So, a perimeter of a square it implies you add the length of both sides, which are of course the same. So, it's going to be 4L. And then, you know, for a circle, it's 2 pi R perimeter. Okay? Or by D, we use radius here. So that's our first equation. Now the other equation they want us to ensure that we have the maximum total area. So the area of uh, the area of the square is going to be L times L, which is L squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared and then the this is equal to the area anyway <laughs> yeah so I want to come up with an equation of course of course when it comes to the issues of maximum maximum we're trying to focus on the maximum total area so the only equation we're interested in is the one for area how do we maximize it we use application of differentiation so what happens, we have to come up with an expression in the other equation that will allow us to substitute in the other equation. So I would rather deal with the radius as well, right? So if you make L the subject in the other equation, it's going to be easier to compute. So 4L is equal to 100 minus 2 pi R divide by 4. So our L becomes 100 minus 2 pi R over 4. We've made L the subject. We can gradually substitute what we have in the area equation. So where we've got our L, we're going to have 100 minus 2 pi R over 4. Now don't forget this is squared plus pi R squared this is equal to our area okay so we've come up with our area expressed in terms of the radius we don't have L there now for us to determine the maximum area you know we have to differentiate right we have to differentiate that's very key very important so differentiation will help us determine the maximum and the minimum values okay let's see let's see so let's go on and differentiate this since the value we have is r as the other value remember a pi is a number right so we only have a and r in this case so we can differentiate so that would be da and then d radius so pi r squared differentiating that two times the pi is going to be two pi the power reduces by one it just becomes two pi r now this other part you want to be very careful we are supposed to apply the chain rule since we've got something in the brackets look at it we've got something in the brackets so multiply by the two there so you have a two and then hundred minus two pi r remains in the brackets Reduce the power by one, which means it becomes the power one. Now you have to multiply by the derivative, of whatever is is inside when you're applying the chain rule. What is inside there is you have hundred over a four, and then minus two pi r over a four. Two there it's one, there it's a two. I'm just trying to simplify it even before we differentiate. So we have pi r over a two. This is as a constant. If we differentiate it, it will disappear. 
this is the power 1 so it will be negative pi over 2 the power reduces by 1 1 minus 1 is to 0 so in short the r disappears so you end up just multiplying by pi over over 2 so we've differentiated there at that point okay so let's try to just simplify things so that we can just have one simple basic equation that we can easily understand so we can just go on directly two can be multiplied by that part so that is one expression now you can see that that can just like divide right even i can even just cancel it from that point so obviously and that can just divide and then distribute the pi pi times the hundred you're going to have um, 100 pi minus 2 pi squared r of course each of these is divided by a 4 where does that take us um, we're going to have 2 pi r and then for the 100 so the 100 divided by, in fact, I don't know how you omit it. There's supposed to be a negative here. If you remember what we had when differentiating there, we had negative 2 pi r over 4. This gave us, it, gave us a 2. So it was supposed to be a negative there. So if you distribute the negative, this part is supposed to be negative and that part becomes positive. Sorry for that. So divide by the 4 you have a 25 minus 25 pi. The other part you have going to have the idea it's a positive, right? You can see it's a positive. So you have a 100 pi divided by 4, you just give us a minus 25, and then it's going to be pi squared r over a 2. Can we make this any better? Can you simplify it? So I think we can. We can. We can actually make it simpler than it is right now. But even if we end here anyway, it's fine. Now, let's not forget our goal. We've come up with an expression where we've differentiated now our area. And this is what we've gotten as an expression. Now I want to get a point where we're going to have a maximum area. Maximum area. So let's try to determine the point where the derivative is expected to be equal to zero. We determine the stationary points. Stationary points. So <coughs> it would be easier if we can factor out the error that we have. So let's have what we have. So let me start with this part, which is pi squared. So pi squared r over 2 plus 2 pi r, and then minus 25 pi. Let's factor out the r. We see what we're going to remain with. Factor out the r. You remain with pi squared over 2. That's as a constant. And then there, we're also going to remain with just 2 pi, and then minus 25 pi. So the only value I have here is R. Everything else is like pi, pi, pi. So those are constants, right? Now, how do you go about it here from this point? We're trying to determine the points where um, this is going to be equal to zero. So you equate the entire expression to zero to see where we can get the maximum point, right? So we have r pi squared over 2 plus 2 pi equal to 25 pi. You're making r a subject, so divide both sides. So we have 25 pi over pi squared over 2 plus 2 pi. So you've actually made r a subject, and you found a point where you expect this expression to be equal to zero of course that point gives you the maximum value of the area now 
ideally if you look at the expression that we had even before differentiation if you noted something you're able to see that we had r squared as the highest power so that would imply that's uh, a quadratic right so it's very easy quadratic you know that when you're dealing with a quadratic when you look at the, the sign it's, it's either going to be a negative it's either it's going to be a, 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 a parabola which is either going to be a small or front okay whether it's going to be maximum or minima so it's only there are only two possibilities so now in this case right away we know this is the maximum okay now to be a good student you want to go on and even actually compute grab your calculator plug in the values of pi and see what you're going to get there okay so the radius that I'm getting on my calculator is something like 7.0012394198 meters don't forget that we came up with an expression that was expressing our L in, in terms of R so it was 100 came from the perimeter equation right so if you plug in there our value of a seven point something and then our pi as well you end up with something like 14.00 something so this is basically what we do this is where we are ending now to prove this is just to add up right so the wall that is going to be used for the square remember our equation we said it's 4L the perimeter of a square and then of course the perimeter of our, our circle is 2 pi r now 4L idea the value is 4 times L right now our L we're finding something like 14 if I'm going to take it to two significant figures and then for our radius our radius is something like what 7 right 2 pi times the 7 that we had there is approximately something like 44 now the 4 times the 14 we have is something like 56 now 56 plus 44 is 100 so idea this is actually adding up the 100 meters that we were given to use to come up with a maximum enclosed area okay so this is application of calculus okay interesting question it was